Tonight, our quest to find the one for 2013 reaches its final destination. As we prepare to unveil the unique individual who this year we have deemed worthy of wearing the crown of the one. But first, let's meet our four selected finalists and take a brief look at why they are here with us tonight. Born in Ireland, like many of the poor people to whom she has given love and salvation, Christina Noble's early years were impoverished and traumatic. One of six children, she lost her mother at age 10, and with a father unable to take care of his family, the children were split up and sent to various orphanages and industrial schools. It was this suffering and hardship at an early age that embedded in her a desire to do something meaningful with her life and change the lives of children in need. I believe that unless the truth is told, nothing is going to change. In 1989, driven by a dream and the memories of her own childhood, Christina traveled 6,000 miles to Vietnam. There she was shocked by the appalling poverty and conditions she saw the street children living in. I had a dream in 1971. The dream was so vivid, so real, so extraordinary, that it was as if I was actually inside of it and it was happening. The sky was red and I saw the words Vietnam written across it. I saw the children running and, and the hands out and the fear because the ground underneath was opening up and I was trying to catch the children before they went down. With no financial backing or support and under the noses of an initially suspicious Vietnam government, she set out to prove that one person can make a difference. She's an Altese mother. Do you understand me? Yeah. That's a buyer. If she doesn't bring him back, I know where that kid will end up. It's so hardcore. If she doesn't come, I will find her. Yeah. I will find her if it takes me the length of breath of this city. I have a dream. In 1991, she set up the Christina Noble Children's Foundation Social and Medical Center in Ho Chi Minh City with full government recognition. Before long, the center was providing free medical care to over 6,000 street and abandoned children every year. In 1997, Christina extended her attention to Mongolia, where she witnessed an absolute breakdown of family values and thousands of children roaming the streets seeking food and shelter from the bitterly cold winters. Later that year, Christina established CNCF Mongolia as an NGO. Today, the Christina Noble Children's Foundation is an international partnership of people dedicated to fulfilling a promise to protect and help impoverished children and those at risk of sexual exploitation. To date, over 600,000 children and their families have been helped by CNCF's programs. Through her courage and determination, and by inspiring so many individuals from all walks of life to work for a cause, Christina Noble has single-handedly made vast inroads into promoting goodwill and peace in our world. Tonight, she is not alone, as we honor her achievements as a finalist for The One. Dr. Cynthia Mon was forced to flee her homeland, Burma, in 1988. Since then, she has worked tirelessly for nearly 25 years, providing critical health care for the people of Burma in the area of Mesot, where her Meitau Clinic is based. Today, the region has become a vital sanctuary for thousands of Burmese refugees, treating up to 400 to 500 patients a day as Dr. Mon continues to face the challenges of improving access to health education and human rights for the displaced people from Burma. The clinic has an inpatient facility of over 100 beds and up to 10 babies are delivered a day at the clinic. Dr. Mon begins her work at 7 a.m. every day and seldom returns home before 7 p.m. At the facility in Mesot, another 40 to 50 health workers attend upgrade training to become health assistants as well as laboratory technicians and prosthetic technicians. Trainees graduating from these courses return to ethnic areas of Burma and provide much-needed primary health care in community clinics, mobile medical teams, 
and with backpack teams. Now, on the border, people who stay could not go back home and there are continued ethnic conflicts. So that means uh, we don't want the, the people of the world to uh, forget, they will forget about the border. So we need to continue highlight the issue of the displaced people. Dr. Mong's approach to her work since the beginning has been about improving access for the displaced and minority populations of Burma to be able to receive health care, education, protection, and ultimately full citizenship rights. Dr. Mong's work has been internationally recognized many times over, and she has received many distinguished awards. While she embraces signs of change within her country, she knows there are still many more significant changes in Burma needed before her work can be reduced. Tonight, we pay tribute to her selfless dedication and personal sacrifice as a finalist for The One.